Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is Snap to Grid. Let me run through a quick little example, and you'll see that I have a little cube that I'm snapping to a little grid on the background. Let's look at the node itself and determine how we are doing that. So let's find where we put the node itself right here. And we have a snap to grid node. We actually have a couple different things set up. I'll walk through what, how it works and how it is working for us. But to suffice it to say the snap to grid float node, so we'll type in snap to grid. It only works on floats. The goal of this is to take in a location. So some number based on a grid side out grid size output the rounded version of that number blueprints are handy because they give us shortcuts to existing functions this is a math function that we could write up on our own or we could use the node that's built in hey i have a number i have something in the world i want to snap it to a grid of a certain size where should i be snapping it to and that's what this node does we're going to take in a location so this is going to be a value Let's say we have a grid size of 10. And let's say we typed in a location of 4. It is going to snap it down to our next grid number. So it's going to snap our location to 0. It's going to round it down. We have a grid size of 10. So every 10 we have a grid. If our value is at 4, our closest grid to snap to is going to be 0. Now if our value is 5, it's going to go ahead and snap to the next closest. If it's seven, again, snap to the next closest. And we look at the node here, you can see where it works. It basically snaps a value to the nearest grid multiple. Couple things to note is if the grid size is zero, then it just gives you back the value you put in. And if your grid size is very small, you may end up with floating point precision errors. For our example, well, we don't have that problem. And let me show you how I basically set this up. What I'm doing is we have a cube that I'm spawning into our world and I'm grabbing where our cursor is in the world. And I'm grading the hit result. So basically whatever is behind it. In our case, it's going to be this block wall that you can see here. Now it's going to take that, figure out where it's at in the world. And then I'm taking the Y and the Z values. So in our world itself, our Y is this way, our Z is this way, our X is going to be this way, so towards our wall. We don't want to adjust that one. So we're just going to take those values, tell it, hey, we want a grid size of 100, so go ahead and give me back the new location based on a grid size of 100, and we're going to plug that into our set actor location. So what that's allowing me to do is you see where the mouse is at. If I move the mouse to the left, once we get over far enough, it's going to snap over. Once we get over far enough, it's going to snap over and it's going to continue. One thing to note here, what you're seeing in the background, just pattern, this grid pattern, that's just for looks. It's not the actual location in the world itself. The actual location in the world itself is something completely different. I just did this for looks. You can also see right here how it's sliding towards me. It's because I'm not snapping the grid on our X. I'm just letting that flow. It's whatever information you want to put in. It just gives you basically the rounded values back in an easy to use node. You know, if my grid size was 50, for example, on our Y, now you notice they're snapping differently. We're getting a little bit back half wise. I can also do this. We'll go ahead and print string. And we're going to print out the value right here that comes out of our X internally, or our Y technically. I keep thinking X and Y in 2D, but technically Y in 3D. Okay, so look at our values on the left. You can see we have positives and negatives values. You'll see I'm snapping. Let's put this back to 100, make it easier for our math. We're going to snap in grid size of 100. And you look at our left and right. We have 100, 100, 100. Once we get to that 150 mark, we're going to end up snapping. Below 150 snaps to the left, above 150 snaps to the right, because our grid is 100. So 100 to 200 is going to determine where it snaps. We're going to either going to snap to 100 or we're going to snap to 200. 100 or 200 based on our values. So 50 to 150 is going to snap to 100. 150 to 250 is going to snap to 200 in this case, and it's going to continue on. So that's it. It's a nice, easy shortcut note. Instead of doing the complicated math, let the Blueprint Engine do it. 
let this node do it. And how it works again as a summary, puts in a value, a float value, put in a grid size. So how big is your grid for our math purposes? And then your output value will be the new value based on your grid size, based on your location of where it should snap to. And that's it. That is our snap to grid float node.